Oh man. Excuse me, Krabby. Excuse me, Mr. Krabs. Whew, I can't believe we made it in time. Whew. I cannot believe we made it here in time. But good morning, everybody. It's me, Spencer Lee, back with another video. And let me preface this by saying it's been one hectic morning as I kind of rushed to set up here. I woke up late, my alarm clock didn't go off in time, so I woke up half an hour later than what I should have woke up at. I originally uh, wanted to go to the marsh and try to photograph the fog this morning, but I drove out there and it was all clouds, so didn't get a chance to do that. So I decided to drive to this side and it's clear, so I booked it over here to this spot alongside the coastline because we've got these beautiful, as you can see, we've got these beautiful cascading walls of water. So I'm just going to try and go for a seascape shot here. The sun is about to rise, so I don't know. There might not be enough time to set up a time lapse. Plus, the conditions are so crazy right now. Holy smokes, these waves are crazy. I don't think a time lapse would be smart to set up because if a wave comes in, that's three tripods we have to worry about. But there's some incredible, incredible cascades right now happening. I think I'm gonna try and set up with one right here in the middle. Yeah, I think that's good. That's nice. Whoa, big wave. See what I mean? Setting up a time lapse here would be a bad idea. A very, very bad idea. <laughs> that was a good one. Oh man, that's incredible. That's incredible stuff. So I did come to this location once before, but the weather was nowhere near as good as it is right now. So I am grateful that we were able to get here this morning to capture the waves and the madness that's happening right now. It's just going absolutely crazy. You can see out towards this way, there's the sunrise. So the light, the morning light should start hitting the coastline. I just gotta get myself lined up and ready to go. Simple setup here, 16 to 35. We're zoomed in to about 18 millimeters just to punch in just a little bit on the mountain. We've got the A1 uh, with a three-stop ND filter on top just to get the nice cascading water and yeah, it's a very, very simple, simple setup. I just really hope that we don't get smacked by a wave, but I guess in the case that we do get smacked by a wave, I just have to do this, right? I just have to grab this camera and this camera and then <laughs> hold still. Yeah, that was a good one. Almost, kind of. We're getting good waves out there in the distance, but we need a big one to crash over here in the front. Like that was not bad. That one wasn't bad, but that one is probably the best that we've gotten since the sun came up. Yeah, that's nice. Right, so now that the sun has come up, we can relax a little bit because I'm pretty sure we got the shot. I'm going to still continue to shoot when the waves come, but I kind of wanted to do a quick what's in my camera bag because whoo, I thought to myself, this is one of the rare times where I actually have all of the pieces of my equipment here with me all at one time. <laughs> the fact that I overpacked my camera bag today is actually a good thing because we can make this video. The bag that I'm currently using is still this guy, the Shimoda Action X 25 liter version, version two. I love it because it is 
relatively small and compact, but it's expandable up to 32 liters so it can hold all of my stuff. Shimoda bags are always the most comfortable because they have that built-in internal frame, they've got the waist strap, the shoulder straps that really support your body. So I can really load this thing out and as long as I wear it properly and strap it all down to my body properly, then you know it doesn't, uh, it doesn't hurt my back, doesn't hurt my shoulders like other camera bags. Another great thing that I love about the Shimoda bags is this pocket here for quick access stuff to uh, you know the phone. And then on the other side, you can put a water bottle, but today I threw in my microfiber towel cloth just in case I have to wipe away salt water that gets onto the camera. So I love these quick access pockets. I also added on this sling bag here. This is like a little five, six liter sling bag from North Face. And I actually got it as a Christmas present from my adopted sister, Diana and her boyfriend, Jay. So thank you guys very much. This has been a godsend um, and I really love it. And this is primarily to hold my vlogging gear and things that I need quick access to. So speaking of vlogging gear, I guess we'll get into that next. I used to shoot with the uh, a7 IV for vlogging and because it was a good hybrid photo and video camera. But I ended up having a hard time in low light situations, especially when shooting Milky Way. Um, that 33 megapixel sensor just brought in a whole bunch of noise. So I ended up switching to the Sony a7S III, this low light king, and I've been loving it for filming during low light. Uh, right now it's January, so I can't really demonstrate that with any Milky Way photography, but <laughs> the first chance I get to shoot Milky Way, um, you know that I'm gonna be using this camera primarily to film uh, all of the video clips. Um, the lens that I'm using is the 20 millimeter 1.8 lens, and it's a really solid vlogging lens because it is not super wide. It's punched in a little bit, but it's also not punched in. Hang on, there's a big wave. It's also not punched in too tight that I feel like it's really in my face. It's wide enough to get big wide angle scenes like this and really showcase the landscape. It also is like punched in enough and it has that wide aperture to give us this nice depth of field uh, so we can really achieve that cinematic look with our vlogs. All right, I'm pretty sure I got the shot. If we're gonna do the rest of this video, I should move to a safer, safer spot, right? <laughs> yeah, let's move, move to a safer location and uh, yeah, we'll try and uh, <laughs> finish up this video here. Whew. Okay, so now that we are away from all the treacherous waters, we can really get into the meat of this video. So yeah, um, we were talking about vlog gear. So inside this, uh, what you call it? <laughs> My little sling bag. I also carry stuff for audio like the DJI mic system that I'm using. And then I'm using the Freewell ND filters just to give us a little bit of that light reduction and that cinematic uh, 180 degree shutter roll and all that kind of stuff. What else do I usually keep in here? Not much. Occasionally, if I have to leave the bag onto the shore, then I'll throw in the microfiber towel cloth in here just so I have quick access to it. Um, the main idea is that, you know, I always just need quick access to that microfiber towel cloth just to wipe everything off and keep everything clean. But um, yeah, that's it for the vlog gear. Um, if we get into the meat of the camera bag, if we open it up here, this is usually how it's, uh, <laughs> it's built out. I've got the main camera set up, the A1 with the 16 to 35 F4 version, the power zoom version. I love it because it's small, lightweight, it's portable. I don't need the F2.8 because now I have you know, prime lenses for that. I've got the lens that I'm currently using and I've got other wide angle lenses that we'll get into um, for astrophotography. I said, so I don't need to the F2.8 uh, G Master versions. So the side of the main camera body is like my secondary or tertiary camera body. I know it's ridiculous. I carry, I carry around three camera bodies and it's, it's kind of dumb. Uh, but I usually use this guy for time lapses, for, um, you know, secondary video purposes, but it's my old vlogging camera, essentially. It's the a7 IV. Um, it's still a really good camera. 33 megapixels is really nice for stills. It takes really great video. And the lens that I currently have on there is the 20 to 70. It's my mid-range zoom. And this is a change from last year where I used the 24 to 105. Um, I opted to get this lens because it's smaller, lighter, and more compact. 
I love that kind of stuff. But it can also get wider at, at 20 millimeters. Um, but just that four millimeters wider makes a big difference, especially when time-lapsing, you can get more of the sky in the frame. And if I am shooting on that telephoto end, like 70 millimeters, uh, I usually have the flexibility to crop in post, so I don't miss that extra reach that the 24 to 105 gave me. Um, but yeah, really love this setup. It usually sits on you know a, a third tripod and we'll get into tripods in a minute it usually is set up left all alone time lapsing but in this morning's case uh there was no way i was time lapsing with all those waves crashing around me so yeah it stayed in the bag this morning if i don't need it it stays in the bag for telephoto lenses we are still using the 100 to 400 g master this lens i love it i love it a lot because you know, 100 to 400 is a nice versatile range. It makes for really good use to get like telephoto shots. Like if I wanted to punch in on the details on those ridges behind me, I could use this uh, for that. And it's also really good if I see a bird or any sort of other wildlife to just quickly slap onto the camera, zoom in and get a nice tight shot. Uh, the only problem is it's still kind of big. I mean, it's small for a 100 to 400 and a super telephoto lens, but it's still pretty big and hefty. Sony seems to be shifting everything towards the direction of uh, making all their lenses smaller, lighter, and more compact. So I hope that this lens is in the lineup in the future because if they're able to make this thing smaller and lighter, man, I would buy it in a heartbeat. But for now, we're still rocking this beast. And that guy sits right in the middle, right over here. And one more layer on top. I also forgot to mention that inside the Action X version 2, we're using the large mirrorless core unit and in, I mentioned in, in a previous video that this core unit is not officially rated to fit in the Action X25 but I was able to squeeze it in somehow so you know use that information for what it's worth but uh, you know tell them I didn't send you if the bag breaks or anything but I've been using it for over a year and it's been completely rock solid it just allows me to store that much more camera gear in in this bag um, but this top row here we've got uh, we've got camera batteries right here, uh, just four Sony Z batteries. I use that, usually keep that up there just as spare uh, batteries in case I ever need to change. Up here, I also got two other lenses. We've got the this guy, the 14 millimeter 1.8 G Master. This thing is an astrophotography beast, but I will still occasionally carry it around for those ultra wide angle landscapes that 60 millimeters is just a little too tight for. Um, having this guy in the bag, it's, it doesn't weigh the camera bag down too much, but it comes in clutch when I need that ultra wide versatility um, and for astro too. And because I've gotten into doing so much astrophotography and I have three bodies, I needed one more F 1.8 or one more prime lens for astrophotography. So I ended up getting this guy. This is the 24 1.4 G Master lens. Um, it's a little bit tighter, but I actually kind of like some Milky Way shots, especially if they're low on the horizon, to be a little bit tighter. So I'm, I'm hoping to use this guy more when Milky Way season comes around to get just a little bit more detail, a little, a little bit closer to the Milky Way. I will also occasionally use this lens for vlogging, and that's kind of why I brought it today, because I thought I was gonna be shooting at the marsh. Usually the marsh is more of a mid-range telephoto area to shoot, so I wanted to use this lens for vlogging and swap it out with the 20 millimeter, but of course plans change and we didn't get the chance to. So um, yeah, if I need a tighter look on the video side, then the 24 millimeter just gives that extra little bit of, uh, of telephoto tightness and stuff. Um, I also ended up buying a tracker from Move Shoot Move that I will review once I actually get the chance to test it out and use it for astrophotography. I'll make a full review of the tracker as well. If the tracker were to be in the bag, we would move the batteries, put the batteries, I don't know, somewhere like maybe in here, and then put the slot the tracker in right there because it's super small and portable. In this laptop sleeve over here, I actually brought my laptop. I'm not sure why today, but I mean, I'm, I guess I'm kind of glad that I did bring my laptop. Um, but this is the brand new Apple MacBook Pro M3 Max, 14 inch. I don't know, I'm, I'm just kind of listing all the specs. Um, space black, all that good stuff. And I, this is a new laptop and I usually don't do like tech reviews 
and that kind of thing. But if you want a more detailed explanation on why I ended up switching my laptop to this guy, um, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to make that video for you guys. But I've been loving this thing. I love how small, lightweight, and portable it is. I used to carry around an M1 Max 16 inch and that thing weighed me down a lot. So now that it, now that this is in a much more smaller, more compact form factor i really love it and you know maybe that's why i brought it because i don't actually mind carrying it around in the camera bag with all the camera gear um, it actually doesn't weigh the camera bag down too much what else do we have in here oh we, i forgot to mention filters um, i'm still using the polar pro quartz line filters for um, most of my shoots i rarely ever use them i mean i use it for situations like this for seascapes that's it for the main compartment of the bag. So if we look into the top compartment, we've got a couple of things in here. We've got this uh, light bar headlamp. I really like these light bar style of headlamps because the beam and of the light um, just kind of opens things up a lot more. So it's not just a single point of light that you're looking at. It's, it really lights up the entire scene. So it's a lot easier to find your way in the dark. Um, but that one is up there with quick access to We've got the, I made a review of this guy too, the DJI Air 3 as my main drone. Um, I'll usually bring it out um, when I'm here on Oahu because drone restrictions and stuff is not that bad here at home. But when I travel, <laughs> sometimes the drone restrictions, especially in national parks, you can't fly drones in national parks. So sometimes I'll leave the drone either at home home, like not even bring it with me on the trips or I'll, or I'll just leave it at the hotel or the Airbnb. Goodbye. What else do we have in here? Yeah, let's just, I guess just keep an eye on the ocean <laughs> and the drone in the air. Um, in this front po pocket here, inside the top portion of the bag, um, I've got the Peak Design camera straps and actually, I don't use these camera straps as physical camera straps. I rarely ever strap a camera around my neck. I'll actually use this primarily to secure a camera that's time-lapsing to the camera bag itself so that in case the wind blows, the camera doesn't go toppling over a cliff or something. If I ever have to run from location to location and I need to strap the camera onto something, I'll use this guy, the Peak Design Capture Clip. Um, it's a lot better and a more secure option than a camera strap because if you have the camera strap, the camera's just gonna be whacking all over the place and it's gonna be loose. So the Peak Design Capture Clip just clips the camera in. In fact, let me show you with the, with the camera. I should actually show you how it works here. So I have all of the uh, Peak Design Arcus Swiss plates on all of my cameras, <sighs> on the bottom of all of my cameras. <sighs> So if I'm wearing the camera bag and I need to run from one spot to another, it's just a quick strap in like that. And this thing is rock solid and secure. Push one button, this thing comes out and you're ready to go shoot once again. Um, usually I will just use this if I'm just quickly moving from one spot to the next, or if I'm hiking, then I'll, use, I'll strap the vlog camera to this so I can quickly pull it off and start vlogging with it. Um, you get the idea, but it's a really convenient option for those uh, quick, the, those quick moving moments. <laughs> I think that's it for the top compartment. In this front strap here, we've got all the rain gear. So uh, Shimoda rain cover, as well as these Think Tank rain covers that I've reviewed in the past. Those all slot in the front in case there is a rainstorm. Uh, so I just open up this pocket and I have quick access to everything. I don't have to open up the main compartment of the bag and risk getting all of my camera gear wet. I like keeping everything here on the outside. Yeah, I think that's it for the uh, camera bag. Um, but let's talk about tripods. Tripods is a very important uh, thing for me, especially for somebody that does video, solo video creation, uh, a lot of long exposure for landscape photography, a lot of time lapses. Tripods is a very essential item to have. And the main tripod that I'm using right now is this guy. This is the FLM CP34 L4 version 2. And it's a nice, big, beefy tripod for seascapes. It's super stable. Um, I'll make a full review on this FLM tripod in a future video. Um, but the main reason why I like this thing so much is because 
they have metal twist locks, so there's none of that um, delaminating when the tripod gets wet and salt water and everything is just a hassle to use, um, you know, when everything gets wet in salt water. I've been using this thing for a few months and so far it's held up pretty good. We're still using the um, Acrotec panoramic head or long lens head. The tripod has a built-in leveling base that I just attach my whole rig up to and it's a really lightweight setup, for, perfect for uh, panoramic photography. For video, I'm using another new tripod from FLM. It's the CP30 M5 Hybrid. It's a relatively small tripod, but it can actually get up to like about five feet tall. So it really, it works really good. And it has that nice versatile height range for um, vlogging. The ball head that I'm using for my vlogging tripod is just this small little ball head from iFootage, the M30. It has a little bit of fluidity when it comes to its knobs, so I like that for video. Um, but it's a small, lightweight, compact solution that pairs very well with this small and lightweight tripod. I used to use this Peak Design tr tripod right here. Uh, as my main vlogging tripod. Now it's just been downgraded to like a third tripod that I'll use for time lapse or something. But what I didn't like about it is that if I wanted to get a tall shot, I would have to extend the center column up like this. <laughs> that just makes the tripod super unstable. And I've had issues with this thing falling down in the past. I've used this FLM tripod for vlogging and I've actually been in a situation where the waves were crashing in all around me and this thing was held up super solid, super stable. So, But I am still using this Peak Design Travel tripod um, for the size, weight and portability. It still is a really good solution for that third tripod. I just have to really make sure that I don't set it up in any sketchy situation because if I'm going to use it for a time lapse or use it for a third body and walk away, I can't have this thing toppling over. So I'll usually either set this thing up really low, I won't extend the center column, or I'll spread the legs out like this to get that extra little bit of stability. But yeah, it's still super nice and super lightweight and portable. I just strap it to the side of the bag and it pretty much just goes with me everywhere just in case I need to have that third camera set up on a time lapse or something. Um, it's not always used just like the third camera it's not always used if the situation doesn't call for it but when it is used it is nice to have but yeah i think that's gonna do it for this what's in my camera bag video i hope that this was helpful just to kind of see how i rig out my stuff um hopefully there'll be more adventures this year in 2024 i'm wishing all of you guys the best of luck this year with your landscape or astro or whatever type of photography that you like to do. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Um, but yeah, if not, we'll see you guys next week for another video. Hit that like button, comment below and subscribe. And yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Oh, oh yeah. There is one more thing that I forgot to mention is this guy the iPhone. This is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I can't stress enough the importance of having a quick access camera. It doesn't have to be an iPhone. It could be one of those Osmo pockets or something, but having a camera you have quick access to to film those quick moments, especially when you're traveling, is essential. Um, they always like to say the best camera is the one that you have with you and the phone is, you know, the phone cameras nowadays work extremely well. So, you know, I can't stress enough how important it is to have a cell phone to film videos or to take pictures or whatever. In case you were wondering, I also have an Aloha Collection uh, fanny pack on. It's ridiculous that I have to carry around three camera bags or three bags because I have so much stuff. But this is just simple stuff. It just holds like phone, wallet, keys, AirPods, uh, simple kind of personal items and stuff like that. I used to throw these personal items into this sling bag and it totally could fit in this sling bag, but sometimes I don't want to carry the sling bag and I just want to carry the personal items. And this just provides that separation from work and personal life and, and yeah. Um, in case you're wondering why I also had a fanny pack on, this is ridiculous, Spencer. You have way too much bags.